Good day, Dallas week morning, Eagles fans. You've got Mac and Mac, John McMullen, Jody McDonald here. We're hanging with you for the next two hours. A uh, whole bunch of JMs on the show today. We've got JM, John McDonald, JM, Jody McDonald, JM, John Mashoda, our favorite cowboy reporter. Comes Mosher's to screwing it up, man. Yeah. Ugh. If Jeff Mosher knew how to spell Jeff you yeah. know, with a J instead of a G, it'd be four JMs on the show today. I was screwing it up. Well, Mosher. We'll on. cut we'll cut Mosher some slack because he's a good dude and uh, he's a good eagle reporter. He's just a bad speller. What can we say? <laughs> uh, we'll be hanging with you for the next two hours here on Birds 365. John, the countdown is on and the Eagles are prepping by walking. Walking through that. Area. Walk through. Yeah, they like that, man. They like that. We don't get to watch practice. I, I honestly think that's their biggest reason for doing it, Jim. Well, that, no, nah, I'm exaggerating. Health, health, number one. But I, I, I think that's a nice little fringe benefit, as they say. So um, I think they enjoy that. Well, uh, whether you guys get in or not, we'll not know. Because when you're in, you're not in all that long. And they yeah, uh, give you in, let you talk. Be a big- Big deal, but evidently it's a big deal. Uh, Quick peek and then show you the uh, walking papers anyway. Uh, but they are obligated to put out an estimated injury report. And there were some telling details. Sure enough, once again, and you yeah, talk about self-serving. It's, this annoys the snot out of me, and it really shouldn't. Uh, how, how much longer after our show was off the air yesterday that the Eagles officially announced that the practice window was open for Cam Jurgens. Uh probably like uh, what a, I texted you right away. Probably like 10 minutes. 10 I minutes. Yeah, you t- uh, I get the text by uh 10 12. Oh, there it goes. Uh, yeah, they've activated cuz that's one of the last things I asked you about. Will we find out today whether and you said, "Well, maybe they'll wait a day. It's only a walk through." I said, "No, no, no. It'll t- today will determine. If he's not activated today, he's not playing. If he is activated today, they open up the practice window. He will be playing. So that's good news that uh, you had said you'd seen him a couple times in the locker room and he looked perfectly fine to you, to, to you. So it was a mandatory four weeks he had to be out because he was on the injured reserve. You think, it, again, they don't have to announce it till Saturday that he's being elevated back onto the active roster, but you expect that to be the case, and you expect him to be good to go when the game starts? I do. I've, I've, I've been on that track for a while. I think he's going to be the starting uh, uh, right guard uh, against the Dallas Cowboys, and, you know, Sue Opeta showed up on the uh, obviously got banged up in the game against Washington. So he was limited, estimated as limited uh, with a hip injury. Uh, so he's a bit banged up as well. Yeah, I think, you know, ships passing in the night. Uh, they'll tip their cap to Sue and say thank you very much. And I think it's going to be back to Cam Jurgens. it is. Uh, I think that's uh, the way it's going to end up on Sunday. And that's good news. Uh, no knock on Suo Pettit because he held the fort. I, I wouldn't say, oh, my God, they had a, a, a debate as to what was going to happen. when he came. No, no, it was definitely Kim Jurgens' job, and he wasn't about to lose it. Suo Pettit didn't play to this unbelievable level where it became a conversation. But this job, he, it wasn't a massive drop-off, which is what you fear when you've got to go to a backup player and you put him into a uh, full-time starting rotation. That's a that's not a situational substitution position. You go in, you're in. And the only reason he came off the field yeah. is because he got he hurt. Saw it like Jack Driscoll when he had to come in for Lane Johnson. Uh, did not. That That's what you don't want. So mm-hmm. Sue so kind of – Kind of held down the fort. I uh, think he did a good job for the most part. Just a quick aside, um, and there are many reasons for it, and the Eagles have their own, and uh, their, their decision-making process is what it is, and uh, I think you have to accept it with Stoutland and, and, and the success they've had on the offensive line. Why do you think it was as quick as it was to Opeta? They'd used Stein there. We we heard all preseason that it was a competition between Jurgens and Stein. And when the first opening came up, uh, Stein was nowhere to be seen. Is there anything extra to read into that other than they liked Opeta because he just had experience? 
I think it's more to do with uh, practice and and what guys are doing in practice. You know, I compare it to to Reed Blankenship last year. None of us knew because we saw him in training camp and did a good job, made the team, but he was uh, clearly behind Kayvon Wallace. And all of a sudden, you know, when we're out of practice, we don't get to watch the entire practice. Uh, behind the scenes, Denard Wilson, then the secondary coach, and said, you know what? Reed's, Reed's been playing better. Reed's earned the spot. When they needed somebody, they went to, to Reed Blankenship. I think the same thing happened here. Um, Sue was just better in practice. Yeah, I mean, throughout the summer, remember, Sue was the backup. When you have all those guys, 90 guys, you don't move around. Uh, you know, Sue was the left guard backup. And Tyler Steen, they were trying to make Tyler Steen the right guard because that's still ultimately um, the long-term plan. Still remains kicking Cam Jurgens inside when when Jason Kelsey finally calls it a a career and Tyler Steen would slip in as the right guard. So they had been working to move him there, um, you know, and a little bit slower than expected. Uh, probably not. I shouldn't even say that. A little bit. Uh, it shouldn't be a surprise. He spent his entire career playing tackle, right tackle at Vandy, left tackle at Alabama. So, um, And then Jack Driscoll, they had focused on being a backup tackle. Uh, but he that was the more surprising part to me because he's he's got extensive in-game experience at right guard, and I thought they were going to go in the same direction they went last year when they had Andre Dillard was the backup on the left side and Jack Driscoll was the backup on the right side. And that was left guard and left tackle, right guard, right tackle. I thought that's the way they were going to go. I thought they would go with Jack and so what passed him in, in practice. It happens. And if uh, anyone you have faith in trusting, being able to evaluate practice, which is not the same as a game practices. I'm just Alan Iverson. At least, although he was obnoxious about it, was right about it. It's practice. It's not a game. Um, you, you believe that uh, Coach Stoutland yeah. is going to be the one. And, who- and for all, you know, for all the balance, you know, and that's, that's obviously so famous. I mean, Nick Sirianni pointed this out, and I'm like, it's obvious, but you don't think about it that much. At least to me, I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. We're the only sport, he said, that practices more than we play. Um, and he's right, and it's more. I practice is more important in football than Allen Iverson in basketball. I mean, basketball, you're playing, you're you know, and then stars, if they play 45 minutes, they got to rest a little bit, and you do their version of walkthroughs, kind of um, not as important. And football, it's the practice is is more important. All right, uh, JM, need your read on the rest of the estimated injury report yesterday uh so we'll pet it limited well, okay good job so uh, we look like we got the starting right tackle back so d- don't go out there and get re-injured while we're practicing um but a couple of dts milt williams limited and jordan davis limited the good news is that uh uh their first round draft pick from this past year mr carter is a full go yesterday at practice, but both Milton and Jordan uh, limited in practice yesterday. They traded Contavious Street during the week, which it made sense from the time he showed up at camp. I think you were saying at some point they may flip him because they've got enough defensive tackles, but he's a legit NFL player. He's good signing, but he seemed a little overkill on the Eagles, and sure enough, they took advantage, got a uh, little draft capital in exchange for him. They knew ahead of time that these guys had the injuries that they had. Uh, do we just read into that, that, yeah, they're being cautious today, they'll be fine by Sunday? Or did the Eagles maybe <clears throat> underestimate what they had and are we going to at some point on Sunday going to go, wait, why do we trade Contavious Street? Uh, I don't think so. For Well, one, for a couple reasons. I think, you know, they want to see more of Moro Jomo to begin with and, and find some more. Um, um, reps for him. You know, we're talking about when Contavious, when Contavious played, it was due to injuries. Last week, it was um, 
Jordan Davis was banged up with the hamstring. Jalen Carter got hurt with the back in game. Um, and they didn't play as much as they typically did. So he he was, I think, at 22 reps. And he played 23 against the Jets. And that was the game Fletcher Cox was out. Um, so typically in other games, he played five, you know, maybe eight, you know, throw him in there for a little bit of a mix. I think that's where they want Morrow to be in that five to eight range. Um, it, you know, Milton's going to play. Milton's toughest guy in the world. He's been banged up all year. He's going to play. I don't even worry about that. And Jordan Davis, he played last week with the hamstring. So in theory, you know, the question is how much is he going to play? That to me is the question on Jordan Davis. Is he limited again? Or do they have more of a pitch count? And then Jalen Carter, that's the really good news. That's the indication that you know, the street trade said, all right, Jalen's fine. Um, and we kind of knew the MRI came back and wasn't a significant issue. So, um, yeah, I expect all three of those guys to play against the, the Cowboys. But the one question I have is how much does Jordan Davis play? Is it going to be – he was on a bit of a pitch count against Washington. Is it going to be the same thing against Dallas? That that could be the one issue. Uh, one last thing on the rosters, John Mishota from the Athletic uh, Cowboys Beat Report is going to join us coming up in minutes. Um, they went ahead a week before they had to, and they elevated Julio Jones from the practice squad. We knew it was going to happen uh, when they announced him as a practice squad guy. I kind of uh, raised eyebrows to go, That was a wink-wink. That was yeah. a wink-wink. Nothing uh, procedural. Um yeah, the Eagles the, taking advantage of the roster rules in the National yeah. Football League and good on them for that. Uh, they could have done it for one more week. They decided not to. He is now an official member of the 53 man roster. Was there an opening there? Was there a spot there? Did they? Yeah, that was the previous spot? Uh, spot okay. By, now, you know, if Cam gets Cam still has to be activated. So right. we, we all assume that Cam would get Contavious spot and they take the the extra week for Julio. So they still have to make a decision um, by Sunday, um, Saturday, really. But, uh, uh, you know, they have to activate Cam Jurgens if they want to activate Cam Jurgens, And my belief is they do. So they're still going to have to make a decision. Um, and, that, and that, you know, that's one of the reasons they didn't do something at the deadline is they have this roster crunch upcoming. Um, and I have to find spots for certain guys and you have to make some, I, I don't, I, I don't think they're all that difficult decisions when you're talking about the 53rd guy on the roster, but they make it out to be like, it's, um, you know, a big deal. You know, did it, has anybody missed Mario Goodrich at this point? Uh, you know, he's back on the practice squad. Um, so it's hard to get, it's hard to miss him when he's still there. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, they have a bit of a crunch and they have to make some decisions. And, you know, getting back real quick, I should have mentioned the injury report. The biggest one is Bradley Roby. Again, oh, I was going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and Grant Calcaterra, with his history, you're not going to see him. So you might get your first look at Albert O. But, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're going to have to make a decision. I thought they'd take Julio one more week, uh, but they decided uh, to do it a little bit early. And the Bradley Roby thing is disconcerting, uh, for lack of a better word, um, because that is going to be a major matchup on Sunday against the Cowboys. They're going to play C.D. Lamb in the slot a lot. It has been a rotating basis. The guys who have been trying to hold down the inside uh, cornerback position for the Philadelphia Eagles. You want to take a guess as to who's going to get the most snaps right now? You got to estimate on Roby. You got to guess along with uh, their DB's backs coach and Sean Desai. Who's going to get the Yeoman's uh, calls against C.D. Lamb come Sunday? Uh, I think it's going to be similar to last week. It's going to be Sidney Brown and Eli Ricks. Um and, you know, one is sort of the run stopper and one is the coverage guy. And they're going to try to piecemeal it together and, you know, just rewind back to the Rams game. Um, it's going to be an issue. Um, and, 
that's where Jalen Carter comes in and, and Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat because they're going to have to make up for that. And that's been the, the case throughout the season. It's just a little bit more amplified against a team who can really get you from the slot. But we already saw it with the Rams and they persevered. It was ugly at times. I think you'll see the same thing. It'll be ugly at times, but, you know, they got to play better than they did in Washington. And they're at home, so that should help the the pass rush. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, on, it's on them. Sidney's a rookie and he's learning and Eli's a rookie and he's learning. Um, and CD's lamb is a really good player. So it's kind of like Cooper cup, uh, hold on to your hat. Yeah. And then last week, uh, I was a little bit more, uh, judgmental of the defensive line. Uh, you gave more credence to Sam Howell, just didn't give him a chance to get there. Well, if they're the best defensive line in football, if they're the best unit in all of football, you got to find a way to get there. You got to step up and go beyond. I don't think the defensive line did. Now, the coverage was pitiful on the back end. They, they weren't as bad as their <laughs> brother behind go them. But I'm going to go more on that. They, 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 well, the good news is the Cowboys won't play like that. So maybe they should, but they won't. Um, they won't be uh, cognizant of getting the ball because they think they're good. Um, very similar to Miami and they are good. And so was Miami, but in some ways that helps the Eagles because they, they don't think the way Washington was thinking. And that's uh, a point. I think a lot of people miss. They're not going to come in and say, Oh, we got to get rid of the football. And uh, one they're, they're not going to play like that. So that's going to help the Eagles. That will be the first question we'll ask John Machado when we punch him up next. Are the Cowboys going to pick up the pace a little bit after watching what the commanders did last week? Are they going to stick to their offense and Dak's more of a five and seven step drop guy, or will they try and uh, steal a page from somebody else's book? Will they deign to do that? Uh, That is a legit question. And John Machota from The Athletic, Cowboys beat reporter, can be asked, and he will answer for us. He joins us next here on Birds 365. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene, go for the screens, go for the gallery, go for the win, go to ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. They're carving them up and good play calling along the way. First and goal at the six. field of life first trust bank is there for you because philadelphia dreams deserve a philadelphia bank we're here to show you a better way to spend your state income taxes and get the money to where it's needed to move to the thousands of qualified kids what we like about blocks is they really know where the need is this program ensures that their dollars come 100% into these kids for their tuition assistance. If you are able, Blocks makes the EITC piece go very quickly and very smoothly. Turn your PA state tax liability into need-based scholarships and receive a 90% tax credit. Since 1977, it's always been about you, the community, at Rafferty Subaru. And through the Subaru Love Promise, we prove we care by supporting charities like So Good Now. Soga now helps kids in under-resourced areas by connecting them with student-athletes to serve as mentors. 
We remove barriers so athletes can help youth in the corners of our communities where light and love are needed most. When you choose Rafferty Subaru, you help organizations like So Good Now. It's all about you at Rafferty Subaru. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles.